sea is calm tonight. The tide is full and the moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand, glimmering and vast, out on the tranquil bay. Comes the wind house, sweet as the night air. Only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon blanched land. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles, which the waves draw back and fling at their return, up the high strand, begin and cease, and then begin again, with tremulous cadence slow, and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles, long ago, heard it on the Aegean, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We will find also in the sound of thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once, too, at the full and round earth's shore, lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long, withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the back edges, drear, and naked shingles of the world. Ah, love, let us be true to one another, for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help for pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. We have the poem Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. And at first, we're going to talk about the beach. So first, when you think of the beach, you think of tranquility. And kind of, you know, calmness. So that's how you're going to kind of, you know, get um, kind of a feel for this poem. And... The first sentence, the sea is calm tonight, is a statement, just a regular statement for right now, but the rest of the poem kind of ties into that statement. Um, here we see that we talk about specific places, the French coast, um, the cliffs of England, kind of brings in um, some imagery of places, you know, you might think of. So the line, where the sea meets the moon, blanched land, this is kind of a uh, hyperbole because the sea can never really meet the moon because of, it just looks like it with the horizon. Um, grating roar, that's personification. And also where the waves draw back and fling, they can't really do that, so that's also personification. Um, so here we down here, we have Sophocles and we have Aegean and the literal meaning of Aegean is like, it's the separation between Greece from Turkey, but also it is a metaphorical separation from Greece and Rome. And then it also says a turbid ebb and flow. And that will, you know, ebb and flow is kind of like the phases of life. Well, the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. So it's the phases of life. So the different types of phases of misery that humans have. Um, sound of thought, hearing it by a distant northern sea, personification of thought. Right, and here we have the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle girdle furled so here we have this the sea of faith is kind of you know folded so he doesn't really he's questioning his faith um and now he only i only hear it's melancholy so it's kind of like he doesn't hear the the beauty of faith he only sees the, the sadness. And here it's kind of like a call to action. All oh, love, let us be true to one another. It's a call of action. Here. It's talking about how the world has so many possibilities. (laughs) 
However, there's also pain and confusion, misery, and war. So we're going to do use Ciardi. So the speaker of the poem is someone who is looking for the calmness in life, but is finding misery. Okay. To who is he speaking to? The general public. So some mental images. Are again with the French coast, the cliffs of England. Also talking about how the sea is calm. You can kind of see how there's no waves or anything. Um, where the sea meets the moon. Um, a distant northern sea. You can kind of see a distant sea. Uh, and you can kind of see a clash of armies. You know, kind of two two armies fighting at night. You can kind of show that. Um, the poem symbolizes um, a person's misery in life and how they try and find happiness, but, you know, eventually all they see is the misery and they just, they kind of just kind of get stuck in that. And then how does the poem, you know, bring awareness or knowledge. Um, it makes people know that, you know, it's hard, you know, life is hard and there is misery and, but you also have to try and find the, the beauty and the, the niceness of life, basically. So not everything is bad, but you also have, you also see the, the different phases of life.